question is, is trans-oriented a uh, emerging sexual orientation? And it's kind of already been answered as a question. It's a rhetorical question and has already been answered in that um, Ray Blanchard, who some of you may know, uh, already heard one response at his name. Those of you who do know uh, Ray Blanchard, uh, he's already classified uh, trans-oriented as a uh, disorder and given it its own name. Um, and written a paper about it, so it's kind of already answered. But I thought we'd try and look at this from a non-pathologizing perspective, since pink therapy is much more into non-pathologizing sex positivity, um, and actually have a discussion about, about it as an issue. And it's based partly on my own experiences of um, socializing for many years in a, a fetish, in a, in a trans fetish club in the East End, of London called Stunners, and some of you may have heard of it. Uh, Paris and I have been on the same dance floor there. It's, a, it's an amazing nightclub. And, um, and my partner of 18 years, Lee, uh, runs a techno party there. So uh, he's, been, he's been running it for about, I think it was, he, we were there for about six years every month. So I was meeting a lot of trans people socially and meeting a lot of the guys who were interested in the, it was mostly trans women. There were hardly ever many trans men there, but it's mostly trans women. Um, and I was meeting the guys, well, I was meeting the women, and then I was seeing the guys who were interested in trans women in action. And it was kind of interesting. And then it, there was mixed up with a whole bunch of gay men, and lesbians, and bisexuals, and people who are non-binary, and all sorts of other people who are genderqueer, flaunting all the rules around gender and sex, and having a fantastic party every month. So it was a, it was a really, uh, it was a really seminal period of my development around my ideas on this about five or six years ago. Um, and my own enduring interest in trans men and finding trans men very hot and kind of working with myself as well, I'm a gay man and what's that about for me? Because I'm, as a gay man, I'm very penis obsessed or I thought I was very penis obsessed. And so um, what I discovered about my own sexuality is that I'm androphilic. So that might not be a Blanchard term, but it means I'm much more interested in masculinity than in the body of the person. Um, I'm much more turned on by male energy than I am by femininity. So can be gay men do nothing for me erotically, whereas uh, trans men, because they are much more masculine than many of gay, the gay men that I've met, are generally pretty hot. Well, it depends on how good they look, but you know, I find they're, they're often much hotter. So um, I thought this would be a really interesting conversation to have up here. Um, and so we're going to have a conversation amongst ourselves. We're probably, we may not open it up to you. We're going to try and talk amongst ourselves. Okay? Yeah. But we might. We might. We'll see how that goes. If, uh, if we flag for conversation, we'll see how we go. So on my left here, immediate left, is Amanda Middleton, who's graduated from the uh, diploma course and is a clinical associate, a newly joined clinical associate in therapy. She's going to introduce herself in a minute. Next to her is Paris Lees who's a trans campaigner and media celebrity and TV presenter and journalist, um, who didn't realize we were going to be filming this today, <laughs> so came in a really chilled out look. And uh, next to her is, is Serge and I'm going to, Nicholson. Nicholson. I was about to use your Facebook. <laughs> Serge Nicholson, who's um, also a trans campaigner and uh, has been, I've been on the dance floor with you at Stunners and Chaos too. <laughs> So uh, this is um, both the private and the, per the personal and the professional meeting in the same room, which is interesting. Um, okay, so each of them are going to talk for about five minutes, introducing themselves and sharing some of their experiences of the topic as to whether they think trans-oriented is a separate sexual orientation and whether and, and, and people have a distinct preference for trans-bodied people. Um, and then we'll, I, we'll have a few questions, okay? I'll have a few questions for you. So, who would like to start? Oh, I'll go with you. you. <laughs> Talk about sex. <laughs> I can do that for five minutes. Can't I? Um, yeah, I guess that... Um, and, uh, do we have any guys in here that are attracted to trans women? <laughs> so I, didn't, I didn't think that we'd, we'd, we'd have that many, actually. Um, and it's, it's quite interesting to me, having had sex with a lot of guys, um, over the past few years, um, that there's this huge shame attached to being attracted towards trans women. Um, and I'm not quite sure why that is, because, you know, if you're gay now, generally that, 
you know, a, a lot of the guys that I speak to that are attracted to women like me, uh, I, I ask them, you know, if, if you were gay, would you be able to tell your family? And they go, oh yeah, but that's different. And obviously I do think it's linked to the, the kind of inferior social status of um, trans women, which uh, we're, we're trying to change, hopefully. Um, but there's, there's definitely a, a class of, uh, and I can only speak from my own experience, of, of, of men who would otherwise identify as heterosexual, and may still identify as heterosexual, who are attracted to trans women. Um, and I'm, I'm sure we've all heard various terms to describe these people, um, admirers, tranny chasers, tranny shaggers, um, probably not the most politically correct words, but the, these are the words that get tossed around on the scene. And um, it's, it's, it's difficult really, because I know people um, wouldn't necessarily define themselves as that, but I think that there is a differentiation to be made between a man who is attracted to a woman who has female anatomy and always has done, and a man, for example, who's attracted to a, w a woman who has a penis. You know, that, that is not the same thing. So, you know, whatever you call that, whether you give it a term or give it a word, it, it's not quite the same thing. And I don't think that we really have put a label on it yet. And I'm not really convinced by black child or just anything these he's got to say really um, is it is it an identity I think it is for some people and it's an identity if we choose to think of it as an identity and, and and it's a sexuality if we choose to think of it as a sexuality as we could choose to think of anything as a sexuality some people like having sex uh, with the windows open you could, you could you could build an identity around that if you wanted to um, so uh, I'm, I'm not sure really how useful it is to um, create an identity based on that but I would really really like to hear more from guys who are attracted to trans women um, especially if they're hot um, and, um, <laughs> and um, yeah and just hear, and just hear what they, they've got to say about it because I think that's really interesting I think that you get some really interesting answers speaking to people and I used to be a sex worker as well it's all coming out now isn't it um, and um, you know, you'd be there with them, and um, I'd often say, you know, so when, when did you first, um, when did you first get involved with this world? You know, what what first uh, piqued your interest? And oftentimes it would be porn that they'd stumbled across on the internet, or a television program that uh, excited them, or something. And um, it, and for them, it's just an, another form of. Um, femaleness that they're attracted to and uh, I just think it's really interesting that there's so many guys out there that feel like that and, and don't feel able to talk about it so um, I'm, I'm kind of more interested in, in, in how they see it rather than us putting uh, other people deciding what that means. Yeah. So, do you want to yeah. take notes or do you want to take the mic along? Okay. Um, and also there are cis and trans people attracted to trans men and trans women, and I suppose uh, in terms of where I'm coming from, in terms of my background, is I'm a queer trans man, um, and my desire is for trans people, and it isn't about necessarily knowing what genitals those people have, so it, or, or it, I would not know at the time, and in terms of meeting them, and so I think there's a, there's a, there's a bit, bit of difference maybe, but what's happening I would say is that all relationships that I have get a comment. Everyone wants to comment. So if I'm with a trans man, we could be called two lesbians. If I'm with a trans woman, she can get called a lesbian, or I can be called closet gay if she's um, still got a cock. Um, if I uh, see a cis queer woman, she could be called straight by her uh, queer friends who say she's no longer queer. Uh, if I'm playing with a queer man, I'm seen as queer, funnily enough, but not gay. So this is from my own community, and it's just like, Oh yeah, and I also get acknowledgement from admirers as well, if I'm with uh, a tea girl and they will then pat me on the back and say, oh, I'm one of them. So I go through all this world. <laughs> that's, that's amazing to have that range. Mm. But it's not you know, complimentary. Ways in which, no, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. But everybody's, everybody's trying, as you say, having a comment, everyone's mm. trying to make sense of it or think that they can express a view of it or, or whatever.
but the new thing for me is maybe contact with admirers by being at Stunners and other clubs, that, that was new to me and I didn't know so much about those men until I've met some recently who then see me as, as one of them, so that's new to me. Right. Amanda, do you want to speak close to this one? Please. So, I mean, I certainly personally and professionally have been involved in, in thinking about these ideas of trans attraction and whether it's, it's useful to think about it as a category. And I think we could debate a long time whether it exists as a sexuality and, and how useful that would be is, is more the key. So I think that there is something about, and what is it about trans that is, that is the attraction? Where is that? And I think I think there's something about um, people living in their truth that's really sexy. And I think there's something about paradox that's incredibly sexy and unexplored. Um, and I think there's something about a kind of uh, a liminal space that's created when it comes to trans attraction um, and, and, and having sex with trans people, which is sort of uniquely delightful. Not saying that you know two cisgendered people having sex is uniquely delightful, but but I think there is something in 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 a sense of of being attracted to people which might be useful in terms of this sense of identity and belonging, and I th I think we're kind of in that. What worries me about the categorisation of, of sort of trans attracted or trans erotic. Um, trans fan, lots of these words, is that it falls back into that the, the old-fashioned kind of modernism that creates another box for people to be in or to be out of. And, and although that box might be useful in creating access to resources and community, I also think that it's, it's just too close of a whisper to, to pathology. Um, and, and as soon as we start to categorise, we, we, we can often start to pathologise. I wonder, thinking about this, there was something in my head about this kind of multiple othering. So not only do we, um, does the world sort of constantly other trans people, but now the people who have sex with those people become another other. Um, and that's, that's sort of where I get into the usefulness of not. Do any of you want to respond <coughs> to each other? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to respond to your point, really, because um, I think it's really interesting that... Oh, can we hear you? Um, I think it's really interesting that we... Um, you know, so many different people um, are happy to kind of give you an identity and that, that kind of pat on the shoulder and say, well, this is what you are. And I think it really ties into um, our identities as trans people as well, actually, because I know that, for, for me, I've probably identified as... Um, a straight boy, a gay boy, um, a trans girl, a bisexual trans girl, a straight trans girl, all of these different things like over the past 10 years uh, as my identity changed. And in the end, if, if you ask me what my sexuality is now, you know, just, I just don't know. And I can't stand her, but um, when Julie Virtual was asked that, she said spontaneous, which I think is, is actually a really good answer. Um, <laughs> it's just a shame she's an awful human being. <laughs> I, I like to think of myself as spontaneous, but um, it, 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 for me, it, it, there's these kind of two different ideas that I hold in my head at the same time that don't really make sense, which is um, it is useful to categorise things. Of course, you know, it's, it's in our human nature to do that. We want to give things words, we want to understand things. Um, and, and it has some currency, we know, we know what it means if we say that someone's gay in a very kind of broad brushstroke. Brush stroke. Um, but then also, how useful are labels in, in telling us about someone's sexuality? You know, it, 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 we should always see them as a guy. I know that my grandmother, because um, I used to live with her before she died, um, I'm sure she wouldn't mind me talking about this, um, she, she was one of those older ladies that just didn't have sex and I, I just I just know that she didn't she didn't have any gentleman callers she didn't she never stayed out and stuff you know and I lived with her and she was just very happy being divorced and 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 she just wasn't that interested in sex um, but if you pushed her she'd have said that she identifies as heterosexual 
what does that actually mean? You know, do, do, does it, what, what does that actually tell you? And, you know, we talk about gay people and, and I think that it always means anal sex, but there's probably straight couples that are having more anal sex. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know how you square those two things of actually seeing the use of, of labels and then actually seeing how kind of pointless and reductive they are at the same time, you know? And to add on to that, I think there's a massive assumption about the the kind of the gendered landscape of the partner of a trans person. I think more thinking about um, non-binary genders and, and gender, you know, as something that can be sort of played with and, and um, change across time. I think as soon as we start talking about trans attraction, there's there's often an assumption that that comes with a particular gender in the person who's attracted, and I think that that's it's tricky because. I mean, if you look at the sort of stuff like uh, girl fags and guy dykes and, and thinking about how people's bodies might be very different to their gendered landscape without going through transition, without identifying as, as genderqueer necessarily, I think we need to be, to be careful to see that gender is in the mix of, of this sex and this sexuality and is not necessarily determined by who you're having sex with. When I, when I first started going to Stunners, I, I, I was um, kind of perplexed by seeing the admirers. I'll call them admirers it's just as a short word, really. Because I thought, because it's a sex on the premises venue and it's playrooms and stuff, I, I was not sure whether these were repressed gay men and they just couldn't come out and they were kind of closeted or whether there was a kind of genuine desire for trans and trans oriented bod trans bodies so different bodies people um, and I I, I wanted to engage and talk to, to some of these guys and try to understand that and they were not going to talk to me they were not interested in talking to a gay man about their desire or their contact and and I've been trying uh, Paris and I have, I've been trying to have a conversation with you for lunch for a while to say well what do you think about this do you think that they're closeted gay men, or do you think, and we can't generalise our entire groups because there's actually a lot of variation in these guys, but I, I, don't, I don't buy that they are closeted gay men, actually. I think they're um, quite happily and did choose, explicitly choosing to have sex with um, people who are, who, who are trans. But what do you, what's your view? Yeah, I think I think it's really easy from the outside to, to look, and I and I, I don't think that I think a lot of people would. Um, but I think it comes back to that whole um, oh he's, he's not really bisexual, he just can't. You know, I think people just just think oh you know you're gay, and anything that deviates from heterosexual oh you must be gay really, and, and this is just this is just pretending a put on. Um, I don't know. I think it's I think it's I think it's confusing. I remember when. Um, because me and my friend used to go out in Nottingham on the pool quite a bit and uh, generally we'd, we'd pull straight guys and um, see if they were up for it really and, and nine times out of ten they were um, and um, I remember when we met someone for the first time who actually liked girls like us and um, I'd never met anyone like that before my friend was uh, a couple of years older than me and she said oh yeah there's some guy like that you know that actually like this sort of thing and I said oh that's interesting well I was actually kind of like really no I wasn't like it was interesting so I just I remember thinking that's really weird why would you like someone that's got tits and a dick and like, I just thought that's really bizarre that's not that's not a natural thing that exists like how 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 could that be could be anything and and I just thought that he was in, incredibly strange and now I don't think that. Now I just think, well, sometimes you just meet people and they're attractive and, and just different people like um, different things, really. Um, and some people like this and some people like that. And it doesn't really mean anything at all, does it? But have I met people that have gone on to identify as gay after sleeping with trans women? Um, no, I don't think I have, actually. But I have, strangely enough. Um, met guys who've been into trans women who've then gone on to transition and I think they thought that they were attracted to trans women and I don't understand how that works, how that, how that process works actually but I've, I've seen that a couple of times so um, but I don't know if it, if it opens it up to being bisexual a little bit more but I think people just, just do things now and I think don't necessarily um, put a label 
on it. You know, like, labels just, become meaningless yeah. in some ways. Yeah. Does it feel good at this moment in time? So, well, I think there are um, queer women that um, seek out trans men uh, as lovers and will uh, <coughs> seek out them rather than cis men. And there are um, cis men that get into trans guys or have love affairs of big, you know, meaningful relationships with with trans men and men with vaginas. These things are just the way things go. And they're, they're not going to be, uh, and so that's why like attending a clinic queue, you're not going to be any issue there about what goes where. It's just, you know, that you will feel better. So partners can go to clinic queue and, you know, it, it not, no one's to be phased about what goes where, you know. But there's, all, there's often, often an assumption that trans men, in terms of being masculine, with vaginas are also going to be like fetishized in, in a similar way to women with cocks. And it might be that um, this is not necessarily unwelcome. So there's been in the, you know, many, many, say 10 years ago, it'd be really, really unfashionable to say, oh, you know, the, either female chasers or male chasers are a good thing. Well, they are, they can be, because it's a, a desire, it's a chase. You can say no, you know, it's actually, Things can happen. You can feel good. You know, it's not unwanted attention necessarily mm -hmm. yeah. for men. But also, what I, that's kind of dependent on why shouldn't trans people be eroticized? Mm -hmm. And it, you know, many years ago, that was very out of favour to say, uh, and and lots of debates around objectification and fetishization. Um, and, it, and it always sat very uncomfortably for me because it took away, you know, the right for trans people to be to be eroticized and sexualized for, for who they are in that moment. Yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, it really annoys me because um, I think that, and I can see where it came from, but I think that when trans people were, were kind of trying to get acceptance and understanding about what it all means, uh, I think that people really wanted to kind of dissociate it from sexuality, you know, and I, and I get the impression that, um, you know, in the past, um, from what I hear from older friends who are trans, uh, they say people say oh, it's like being gay. But oh no, no, no! It's not like being gay. No, it's completely different, completely different to that. And I do think actually that there's a new kind of prudishness which is expressing itself um, through certain trans feminism sometimes and, and certain types of trans activism. Where again, you know, uh, if if anything is seen to be sexualised, it seems to be a bad thing. And actually. You know, when we objectify people, but all we do is objectify them, that is a, that is a problem. But actually, sometimes people want to be sexually objectified. Sometimes it's actually quite fun being treated as a sexual object. And, and, and trans people should be allowed to do that too. And I think actually the, with the younger generation, um, I think we're seeing that really. And, and you know, certainly for me and, 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 and things that I've put out into the, the um, public sphere, I, I, I feel no need to apologise for being a sexual being, you know, why should I? You know, I think I think that's a very old fashioned kind of view really. No, I think that's a really I think that's a really important role model that you are that you're occupying as a public. Like, you, might, you might not want to be seen as a role model, but I think it's quite empowering for young younger trans people to feel able to claim their sexuality because they may well have kind of just, just felt very uncomfortable with their genitals and, 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 and with their bodies. Um, and, and actually now st you know, seeing people who are really comfortable and to exploring and proclaiming that, that actually sex can be good fun is really in, in, encouraging and hope, it's a bit like inspiring for them. So I, you know, I think that's important. And there's an idea that as um, pre-op, no op people, you shouldn't be having anything and doing nothing and you're not going to have a sex life. And that isn't reality. Uh, it is for, for some people in terms of being isolated or, or that they can't face bearing parts of their body. But it is, uh, you know, people don't wait till the end of a conveyor belt to start having sex. You know, it's not when you've got everything in place. Or you might not go that route anyway. You might not have genital uh, surgery at all. You know. But there may be also a shift in desire. I mean, some of my uh, trans girlfriends have said they're no longer looked at in the same way since they've had their hop. Mm -hmm. So they were dancing with us on the dance floor. They notice going back after, oh, suddenly there's no interest. No one's interested. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it could be the same for trans men too. It might be that they're desired for their no-op uh, 
uh, masculine cunts, and then they're not desired if they've had phalloplasty surgery, don't they? What's the attraction? Like, gender presentation is part of attraction, and genitals are part of attraction, and I think it's, it's for different people, it's going to be different things. I think, um, I think uh, for me, that se sexual preference is one of the areas that it's okay to discriminate, and not in the sense of, you know, oh, I would never have sex with, um, you know, a, a red haired person or a black person or something like that, you know, that, that's ridiculous, you can't rule out whole groups of people, but if you've got preferences and things that you like, um, I, I, I think that's fine, and I think that, um, I don't know, I think that a lot of the stuff that I see is, um, I think there's a certain brand of activism as well at the moment among trans people that says, you know, um, we're, I, I've been criticised before by, by explaining to people that I was born male, um, and, and I can see why that's problematic, you know, but, but um, I feel like people want to kind of completely erase and, and say that being a trans woman is exactly the same as being uh, a cis woman. And it's not, and I, and I think that people get upset when you refer back to the fact that at some point that, that there was a penis. But for me, that is a problem, that's what makes us trans, you know. Um, and, and the point that I want to make is that I do think that we are all a little bit obsessed with genitals, and I do, I do think that's why uh, a lot of the questions about trans people, about whether, whether or not you've had surgery, is, is about genitals, because, because people are interested in genitals. So I think to pretend that it, it doesn't make any difference and it's purely based on the person is, is really simplistic. And actually, um, but at the same time, I really appreciate what, what you were saying, Dominic, about um, finding trans guys attractive and then actually questioning yourself and thinking that you were quite penis obsessed. Uh, and I put myself in that category. Um, but And then I also put myself in the category of actually questioning that and thinking, oh, do you know what, actually, I think it's maybe masculinity that I'm, that I'm, I'm quite attracted to. But then I'm quite attracted to women's bodies as well. So, um, yeah, I don't know what that, what that all means. There's a, there's a similar touchy difficulty if you say you were drawn to androgyny, mm -hmm. because then it might be then uh, it's... You might not. It will come out anyway eventually that that would that that, that would show. So some some trans women would be very uncomfortable with me expressing that that I'm also drawn to to androgyny. But that is me. So it's broad, very, very broad. But it would be an in, it could be an insult to. It wouldn't go down. Um, the, you, you talked about the guys not being the admirers not being interested in post-op trans women and. Um, Certainly, the, the stories that you hear about going to trans cl clubs for trans women, um, so either the bars or the clubs, uh, the, there are stories about the, where, where the women are warned, really, that the guys will come up to you and they'll ask you in a very, in a very brief way, what's your, oh, you look very pretty, compliment. What's your, what's your name, compliment, or interest? Uh, are you, um, do, you, do, you, do you have a dick? Do you, uh, have you had so, have you had that off? And if not, then, then does it work? And then they might ask you to buy they might buy you a drink, they might not even buy you a drink, and then it's can we go outside or can we go somewhere else? And that kind of behaviour I I was kind of shocked by, but I saw it on a regular basis. And it's kind of quite autistic behaviour. Yeah. And we, we were talking yesterday at the conference about there being a higher prevalence of or frequency of autism coexisting with gender dysphoria for some for some trans people. So I'm wondering whether there might also be some autistic like conditions or, or traits occurring in some of these admirers. And I don't know what your thoughts are on that. I'd be interested in your experience. Well I don't know about autistic traits and I, I, I wouldn't want to get into that too much really. Um, but I think that, I mean, you, you can't remove those environments from what's going on elsewhere. And um, I think that, that trans women have, have been seen purely as, as sexual fetishes and, and sexual objects. And, and you go to those places, and it is a bit of a meat market anyway. Let's not pretend that a lot of bars aren't, aren't like that in, in London and cities around the UK. Uh, but I think it's kind of, heightened and I, I do think that um, th these guys kind of don't respect the girls because they're taught not to yes. um, and I think it's I think it's I, I used to really um, 
resent those guys actually um, because because they did used to treat me like crap. Um, but actually, I've, I feel quite sorry for those guys now because they're they're made to feel ashamed of their own desires, and um, no no one's showing them that you can treat us well. Um, and that's that you know it's, it's no excuse, but. Um, I don't know. I, I, I actually really don't think that they don't realise that they're doing anything wrong sometimes, actually. And it's interesting because somebody did it to me um, the, the um, other week. Um, he, he jumped in my car and said, oh, you're going east. And I, I said, yes, yeah, so I was leaving the way out club. Um, we were talking on the way back and he had that conversation and he said, oh, so are you, are you pre or post dog then? We didn't like for stock because I, th I thought he was making so many assumptions about me anyway, but you know, we've, we've been at the way out, so that's fair enough. But I just, I just said, you know, that's, I, I don't like your question and I won't answer it. And he was like, oh, why is that kind of, and I said, no, I just said, you know, how, when would you start asking, just jump in a taxi with someone and start asking them questions about their genitals? And I didn't want to come across like this really pious kind of like, do not ask me about my genitals kind of thing, you know, because we'd have a drink and we're having a chat and, and, and it was and it was fun and I was on the way home after a good night out. But I just explained to him, you know, and he said, yeah, I know, but, and I said, yeah, but I'm still a human being. Like, so, you know, it's, it's, it's not kind of cool. And I think that a large part of it actually is, is learning to demand respect and I know certainly from my own perspective which again is all I can talk about really I definitely was, was having sex with people as a way to kind of boost my self-esteem and I think a lot of the girls that go to these clubs do have low self-esteem um, and if, if you find a man that's attracted to you that kind of validates that you, you look like a pretty girl you know um, so there's so many different complex issues that are here you know sense of if you, you've got these groups of girls with low self-esteem, guys are going to try and get away with what they can get away with. So, you know, I don't think there's one, one thing really. True, but I think I haven't seen that kind of behaviour when I go to bar or whatever, or club or whatever, um, where, the, where trans guys are going and, and maybe a more queer crowd is. The people interact that would never go up to a trans guy and say, so, well, I've, I've never seen that happen. I mean, I don't know what you're... You, you <coughs> there could be bad behaviour in other settings. It could be um, it could be a demand for unsafe sex or something put on you uh, because you're a trans guy, so if you're going to get it, you, you're going to have it this way. Really? That, I've, heard of, I've heard of that. I've heard of someone being told, oh, because they're a little bit fat, then they have unsafe sex or no sex. And this, I just like, couldn't believe it, you know. And uh, so I think there's other other pressures um, that can be put on people when you want you think you're going to have a good interaction, good sex, and then you suddenly get an awful thing said like that. And I think it's different cultures, so, so thinking about cultures where there are trans men, that's uh, often kind of connected to, to lesbian cultures, and so there's different kind of rules around how you approach and language kind of sexual desire. Um, and, and also there's something about, and I think this is highly debatable, sort of questionable, there's something about the, the, the reverence that comes of trans men sometimes in, in queer women's scenes that creates a different level of interaction. And I, and I wonder what is it that creates often in one context reverence for trans men and an absolute kind of adoring and, and this kind of very white sexuality. Um, which which doesn't happen in, in context of trans women. Mm -hmm. I, I found that really interesting actually, because because some women who identify as, as gay will date trans guys, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. 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 But you just don't get that with with, with gay. Oh, they're actually queer. Quite, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, queer. Yeah. Um, but I don't I don't think you you do get that. But then I I have met quite a few gay guys in the past six months that have said you know God I'm I'm really attracted to you. You really know what that means, you know. Um, and again, it's that you know putting lab labels on things and, and, and feeling people being in a, um, a, a having a different set of expectations to live up to. I mean, what does that mean if you're gay and you find a trans woman attractive? You know, why can't you express that? We, sure. we want to kind of stick to our little box a little bit, don't we? Mm. Or not? And I think that's one of the interesting things that, that we're seeing is people stepping outside of their boxes, mm. that you know, and de defying their boxes, which yeah. is. I think there's another um, possible 
difference between trans men and trans women. Um, if, if trans men are going to go along a surgical route to have uh, lower surgery in the future, or they, they, haven't, they haven't got that, there is a, an element of men who have sex with men amongst trans men, and it's not anything to do with their sexuality. It's to do with their research and their study of men. And it can be that they just need to. They need to see, they need to touch, they need to have a sight of something that they want or they can't have or they will never ever have. And it seems to be part of a research that, that trans men, some trans men feel the need to do. And they are not necessarily, uh, they're not gay at all. And, or, or, or they might be queer or bi, but they can be totally, totally straight and they have this need for this, this, this research. And I've never heard of that in terms of trans women's needs to see a cis vagina in a sexual... So I might be being picked up by trans guys who want to look at my penis just because they want to do research. Yeah. <laughs> But I've never heard it the other way around. I've never heard of my um, women friends have ever heard. They said absolutely not. They had no need to do that. So I think that's quite an interesting difference in growing into yourself. Not everyone has the need. I'm not saying everyone, but it's like it seems it seems quite interesting. It's, because then also you wouldn't be, uh, you may not have any knowledge of, uh, of gay life, gay men, sex with men. You might be going into that all on your own, you know, in a, in, in, you might not read booklets, you might not, you know, it might be of no knowledge of sex. sex. So that's a, an area that's a, a sort of gap. Yeah. Don't you think though that some of that is due to the fact that there is so many more liberation of images of, and I'm not talking about gay porn, yeah. but just in general, Make women when there are, maybe. that not be the reason, or one of the reasons? Could be. I think there's plenty of penises on the internet. Mm. <laughs> I think it's about, I think, I think it's about getting up close and personal with one another. Talking about it, isn't it? It's actually yeah. handling and getting it up might not be, um, It might not be even having gay sex, it might be just being having some sort of, some sort of contest. Yeah. Huh? I think it, there's something about having your something about your gender affirmed by your your the people that you're fucking mm -hmm. um, and and whether that's affirmed as as being part of the same gender as them or part of a different gender you know gender in sex can you do sex without gender you know it's pretty if you think about gender as a sex toy it's pretty much there all the time uh, that's her line. Sort of how you're doing it. That was my that was my attempt to, to be clever. But um, gender as a sex toy. See, I think it's a very good line. But the bit that I'm curious about is how someone's sexuality gets defined by who they're fucking, and I think that that's a really new idea, and it's incredibly frustrating for me, being in relationship with trans men and then going through this kind of weird kind of social questioning of my queer identity. And it does happen a lot in, in more kind of heterosexual environments where people will say, you know, oh, you must really be straight. Or trans men being offended though that I wouldn't have sex with cis guys because then I'm somehow degrading their masculinity. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's, it's really problematic to think about how that act creates sexual identity for people. Drives me crazy. It's interesting. Interesting. What, what I wanted to ask, because um, I, I was getting the impression that London in the 80s and the 70s, it was all very all gen gender fluid and everyone was out kind of partying and, and, and doing kind of what, what, what they're doing now. Is there anybody like here that was kind of around in the 80s that was partying and having sex? A bit? Is it different? Because it seems to me that it, it it's all all the boundaries are blurring now, you know, but is, is this a recent thing? Or is this, you know, we're talking about it now, has is, is it, is it always been like this, but we just didn't talk about it? I think it's always been like this, a trans woman, that transitioned in 1969, so it's like 40 years ago. And there was all those guys that were attracted to trans women, and I think the questions got bolder, as it were, coming straight to the point, have you had surgery or not? You know, have you got a pop or not? And then if you said, yeah, they'd walk away. And I kind of get that in a way. I didn't always get that when I was younger. And if I had sex with guys, which I did, um, they would often say when I was younger, oh, don't 
say hi to me in the street or something like that. Mm. And I used to get really angry as the years went by. But then I learned, maybe a bit like you, I learned that you know sometimes if you're attracted to a stigmatized, mm. then you have stigma directly at you as well. And the language is not there for guys or women to be able to say that this is okay. I'm attracted to these people for whatever reason. Mm. And just as I was presenting, I'm um, co-founder of Tony Q, I don't think you were here at the time. And I was talking about gender validation um, through sex as well, which Joanne Keatley reported on. But we did, uh, through Tony Q, an outreach at Sweet Wednesday. And there's a real lot, there was at that point, a lot of unprotected sex happening. Both ways, guys getting into butt. I use that in term, because that's what I use in sexual health. And, and fucking without protection. A lot of guys um, won't relate to the images of sexual health that are aimed at gay and bisexual men. A lot of uh, guys who are attracted to trans women will not relate, and so I won't pick that up. Won't relate to it. It's not how they see themselves. And there's a real sexual health issue out there. Mm -hmm. Not only for trans women, but for, trans, for the guys that are attracted to them. And it's not being focused on, there's not that care being um, focused on those people as well. Mm -hmm. But a lot of issues have come up from what you're talking about. And presumably their wives and partners that they go home to. Well, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, perhaps. Well, they, you know, I guess it's complicated issues, really. And for me, sexuality doesn't have a label. But I know that labels for some people can be really important to make sense of how they feel. But as been just discussed here, it can also be quite confusing because I think we don't fit into a label. I mean, I've been with my partner, who's here, he's male, for 35 years. So it's, you know, it's a long time that I've been in that relationship. Um, but I'm aware of, you know, it seems like there's an increase in people who are attracted to trans people. It's just that I think trans people are more out there, with more images of us. Anyway, that's my opinion. Thank you. Any other thoughts, comments, responses that have we done this today? I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm really grateful um, to you, Dominic, for creating a space where we can talk about sex, because it is my favourite mm. subject. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, well, you do it so well. I'm, 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 I'm told. Um, but, um, yeah, and I, and I just don't think that we that we, 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 we get to them. I think it's it's been seen as a luxury, actually, because we've been focused on rather more pressing issues of human rights and, and workplace discrimination and, and things like that. But, um, you know, everybody everybody likes to have a little orgasm every now and again, don't they? So um, I think this is, is a subject that we're going to be talking about more and more as trans people gain, gain acceptance. And there's going to be just, just as much more uh, in terms of social networking or as a community getting together and doing things together. So it's, you know, it's there's just more and more of us, so it is more. We're more known. You know. What Anna would say, and that means that often the kind of the complications, the issues, the shame, all of that stuff is it will show up more and more in in consulting rooms and in clinical practice. And 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 I think there is something to be said for education around um, being a partner of a trans person or or working with the shame that might come up for someone who particularly is attracted to a particular sort of type of person that is a marginalised group yeah. um, and, and what that means. So I think from this conversation is then what, what does that mean for practice? Mm -hmm. And what does it mean for practice? I don't ask <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I think there are some very typical issues, but again, it's, it's, it's that thing about my own experience around moving between spaces where you're privileged but invisible um, to then be having your sexuality labelled by people incorrectly constantly to then supporting someone possibly who's in, in quite a full-on process around transition um, and, and how we do, how you do gender in a relationship. It all becomes uh, or can become quite negotiable and I think that that can be that can create stresses in a relationship or, or a short, you know, fuck. So, so talking about that with people, I think, is important. And I think there's, there's sort of knock-on effects from uh, more of us meeting each other in our extended circles overlapping. And I've got uh, gay male friends that don't necessarily 
call themselves gay anymore. Mm -hmm. So they will call themselves pansexual, they will be uh, attracted to trans men, and, and then even broader, the sexuality has broadened in the time that I've known them. And so in terms of all of us uh, getting to know each other, socialising, having love affairs, it's, it's change, people change. Yeah. And, and people will change, you know, uh, in my workplace I have a, a trans-oriented best friend, she's got on her screensaver, her uh, partner who's transitioning, you know, things, there are brave people doing late, latent out there things. Yeah. It's gotten pulled tonight, fine <laughs> okay, that, that actually sounds like a very good point to draw it to a close. Thank you both, well, thank you all three of you very much for coming and sharing your thoughts.